Hey everybody, you are tuned in to the Fremad Podcast. I'm not going to go into my usual spill, my spiel, about having a pencil behind my ear. I, I wanted to, uh, uh, we're going to try something new. I wanted to pick through some newsworthy little tidbits and it's kind of around the world news. Maybe one little thing around the world news wise. Some of it's relatively weird but having a great time just writing down little blurbs here um in the united states uh freshly after his book his book's coming out dr fauci is might be on the ropes the emails don't look good um oh lord it's even better when your stomach just starts growling um, I think it, uh, my other little tidbit, it was, uh, looking further into the Wuhan lab and I know that the whole money, I'm going to say they're obfuscating what the money went to or where it went to or what they were doing with it. And, um, something that a lot of people overlook, I've seen this multiple, several t- different times through a couple of years ago and this was uh parts in the north in china having water issues i don't want to call it crisis because i don't know what constitutes a crisis because we've ruined our own language uh, yeah i wanted to tell you in the united states uh black lives matter is still a communist organization that has not only doesn't care about a community, it actually is doing something to destroy communities. If you look at what happened in Russia in a perpetual victim class, there's groups of people that became basically like a useful tool for, for communist, for takeover. I don't know if this is... A communist takeover but it easily is sowing dissent and losing credibility in uh, the current structures we have now what you get out of it a lot of people don't know this is it's more government and there's more government control and there's more government everything government structures and if you think we have a problem now You'll just have new masters, and you'll have worse ones. Further on here, oh, this was something that was largely left out of uh, U.S. news and Burkina Faso. In that's, uh, it's I want to say North Africa. I use the term North Africa because it's not South. If you go cut the continent of Africa and you go north of that line that I remember Uh, reason why I mentioned about Burkina Faso um, there were 132 people killed in connection with uh, extremist attacks and that wasn't too far from I think of the Niger border and people would ask me why I focused on this and and the news people didn't a lot of people understand that um, Niger and uh, a couple of other, I think it was Mali and Niger has had issues with extremist attacks. And I think it's funny that people forget that they're, they're dealing with, uh, I mean, they're dealing with a lot of things, but that's something that the French forces have been involved in Mali, I think, don't don't quote me on this one. Special forces uh, and various U.S. Uh, military assets have been involved in in that region before. Not Burkina Faso per se, but um, I I just think we it's worth looking at when you get a chance. Oh, in uh, Yemen, uh, there was an opportunity. I think it was peace talks. Uh, and somebody, they were trying to get people together for a, um, 
I want to, not peace talks, uh, something like that. And I know that's bad because my eyesight's not the greatest here, but uh, a Houthi missile attack had killed uh, 17. And I had read that, I mean, I know this is happening, but we're kind of getting, I want to say, adjusted to bad news over there during what equates to a civil war being fed by different parties. It's a power struggle. Uh, other people are feeding the fire. Oh, uh, El Salvador is planning on making Bitcoin legal tender. This is something I wish people knew. And, and you're asking me why that's a big deal. Uh, for the longest time, digital currencies have not been the most in the eyes of, of many leaders and uh, finance people, uh, still not not credible. And you would say, oh, well, they're starting to uh, have traders. There's people buying into it at uh, like uh, Goldman Sachs or Chase Manhattan or somebody like that. Um, they still laugh behind your back. I know there's people, I hate to say there's people uh, my father's age that still you know, like the OK Boomers that still laugh at ideas, new ideas. And I, I, I try not to. I try to uh, dig through it and say, it, it, I, I know being an early adopter might help. And even if this technology isn't, it doesn't stay in the current form of how, how we're using it, it might lead to other better things. Another technological boost, uh, uh, better computing equipment, technology, power usage, things like that. Um, I know that, let me see, um, we're still going around the world here, folks, don't worry. Um, oh, goodness, uh, this was one that I wanted. Uh, Sudan is working on agreement to house a Russian Navy base uh, along its coast, and I know you'll laugh and say, well, most Navy bases near a coast, unless it's an airfield, but they had been working on that before, and I think that was with uh, Al-Bashir, Al don't quote me on that, and when there was a level of stability in their region now, which I think was, uh, don't quote me on this, Al Jazeera, who had said that uh, uh, dealing with the, their government's more or less now a technocratic uh, mishmash, um, various groups getting together, what have you. And I guess now there's enough stability and, and not enough of a dark cloud over them that they could go through with the deal. I found it interesting, and I know... Uh, the United States obviously has uh, regional bases there, but uh, I find it funny that people kind of overlook how there's like an arms race to get assets in Africa and not just uh, resources, but basically kissing up to various governments to get uh, military bases, logistics ports, and things like that. Not just uh, Russian in the United States, but China as well. And I, I guess people, I guess people uh, don't understand that. It, I don't want to call it an arms race, but it's a race around the world. And at one time, we, I want to say it was the colonizing effect of like Belgium and in the uh, uh, Great Britain and people like that. In Africa, I think Italy and Germany, but that doesn't really apply now. But, I mean, if you ask about world peace, would be... I, I, I know it's their right to lease out land and, and ports and things like that, and uh, it might come to their benefit eventually for infrastructure when, when and if we leave, we, as in other de more developed countries anyway folks uh, before I go on and on about that one um, 
I know I missed, I try to miss, not miss things around the world. Um, uh, ooh, I think it was Great Britain. Um, sharing records and documents with their National Health Service for third to third party people. Uh, not party people, but to third parties. Like party people. Throw your hands in the air. Third party people. Wave them like you just don't care. Um, hell, I'll try to put a link below. Uh, try not to Mickey Mouse with that one, but yeah, uh, guys, let's have a good week. I'll try and do it next uh, next week.